thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and offering my viewers 83% off and one month extra free. We do not condone in the violence being done to women and children. We do not take part in that. We do not respect that. That's not what Scum Gang 69 is about. And that's a fact. In 2015, 17-year-old sociopath Tekashi 69, alias unknown, is wanted by the U.S. government. This fugitive is at large and is wanted for several genocides. Federal enforcement advises the public to stay away from this individual. Law enforcement say Tekashi 69 is a violent member, New York guy, called the Scum Gang 69. 69 started the music video for his 2015 track Inferno with an eerie wanted poster. A strange voiceover says that he's been missing since May the 8th, 2015, and is wanted for several genocides. Well, 6 9 had indeed been missing for a few months in 2015, but arguably for something not quite as bad as genocide. Or maybe worse, depending on how much time you spend on Twitter. But something very important happened on this wanted screen that may have slipped a lot of people by. Did you miss it? Well, it listed 6 9s age as 17. However, considering the fact that his date of birth is May the 8th, 1996, this would actually mean that on the date that he was considered missing, he'd have actually been 19 years old. But in the wise words of Drizzy Drake, 19, 17, what's the difference? Well, well, auto-tune R. Kelly, there's a big difference. And I can tell you that that mistake on 6 ix fake wanted poster was no accident. But I wonder, why would 6 9 want people to think he's 17 after going missing for a couple of months? But first, a word from our sponsor. Surfshark. 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 I, I, I Surfshark. love Chris Rich. Surfshark, their VPN's the nicest. So nice. Surfshark, one account, unlimited number of devices. Device. Surfshark keeps your identity private. Surfshark, link in description, you can try it. You ever heard about a VPN that's a virtual private network? Yeah. Keeps your info private and safe online and lets you bypass sensors. Access content from abroad. That means movies, that means sport. It could be more, but don't get caught. But your secret's safe with Young Trap Law. Do your secret's safe with Surfshark. No VPN goes harder. Let's you use Netflix in Japan to watch that little Wayne film, The Carter. I watched the whole damn film, it was crazy. So crazy. Surfshark's the real deal, the VPN's so way. Wavy. So wavy. Surfshark, their VPN's the nicest. So nice. Surfshark, one account, unlimited number of devices. That's really handy. Surfshark keeps your identity private. My private guy. Surfshark, link in description, you can try I'll give it. Give it a try. You get me? It's the Surfshark gang. Come right the wave. Or just use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there is no risk to trying it out for yourself. Link in description. Surfshark. Surfshark. Now, according to the official criminal complaint, on February the 21st, 2015, when 6 9 was 18 years old and 8 months, he went to a house party in Harlem. He'd been invited over after meeting a guy called Tay Millie at a studio in Manhattan. That same day, noticing that he seemed cool and had a lot of money to blow. 6 9 like a true thotty out here, going home with the first guy that he meets at the studio with a bit of bread. But anyway, he got to the party in Harlem and was greeted by Tay Millie. Real name to Quan Anderson, who was actually three years older than him. And they had met with the intention of shooting wild social media content and music video clips that evening. And let's not forget that this was the height of 6 9 getting social media attention with provocative clothes that featured catchphrases like STD, as well as having released several shocking music videos with pretty borderline pornographic content. So I'll tell you one thing, he wasn't going over there to play hip hop Scrabble. So apparently the other guys there asked 6 9 to invite some girls over, which he declined. They're like, yo 6 9 you know, you got all the bitches calling. Cool. Like, I don't got no bitches, you know what I'm saying? That pop out this time, because all the bitches I was fucking with was my age and they yeah. had curfew and all that shit. I'm like, y'all the grown niggas, y'all get some bitches over. They was like, you know what? Let's invite for the bitches from last night. I personally think they were asking a little too much. I mean, if you want a heroin junkie that's willing to shoot up dope on camera, he's got you covered. But someone who owns a vagina? No dice. So when it became clear that 6 9 had no chicks to call, Anderson suggested that they call a girl, quote, from last night. Well, I'm not sure what these guys were up to last night exactly, but I'll tell you what, they were certainly not having a passport comparison competition. So the girl from last night arrived, and 6 9 described her as wiling out, acting like an adult, and apparently telling him that she was above age. I remember asking her this question. I'm like, yo, why are you so rowdy? Like, why are you so turnt? Like, what's up with you? She's like, I'm grown. I, I, I'm like, how old are you? She's like, 19. I said, oh, it's lit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, And to be fair, 6 9 did say that he thought that she was older because of her confidence to continually ask him if she could log into Facebook on his phone. She come on her bullshit. Ah, ah, yo, 
Let me somebody yo, let me use your phone. Like, use my phone. Like, let me sign on the book. Like, yo, you're talking crazy. As we all know, these days you'd be hard pressed to find anybody under 50 on Facebook. Anyway, they made three videos with this girl, which Anderson posted to Instagram, tagging 6ix9ine, who subsequently reposted those clips to his Instagram using an external app called Wiz. Wait, so you're telling me that there is a hot new startup app that allows you to post pictures of underage girls to Instagram easily, and it's called Wiz? R. Kelly better be on the board of advisors. Apparently there was one where the girl, fully nude, engaged in oral intercourse with Taquan Anderson, while 6ix9ine stood behind her, making thrusting motions and slapping her on the buttocks. Classy. A second where the girl is in a bra sitting on the lap of 6ix9ine while Anderson pours ice water on her chest and grabs her. Really guys? Ice water? I guess sometimes you just don't have the budget for champagne in your child abuse videos. Needs mutts. And a third where the girl is nude sitting across the laps of 6ix9ine and Anderson whilst Anderson grabs her legs and privates. Gotta say 6ix9ine must be the most disappointing Santa Claus to find yourself on the lap of as a minor. Anyway, from this incident, 6ix9ine just went on with his life. Doing whatever it is he does, you know, selling heroin, wearing terrible clothes and running around causing trouble. Meanwhile, well, two days after the incident, the mother of the girl included in the clips saw the three videos posted to 6 9 social media and reported it to the police. And there's not much funny about that. Well, I mean, you know, 6 9 getting snitched on, it's kind of funny. A few days went by and nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Well, at least until 6 9 started getting some strange death threats by phone. Months later, I get a call. They say, yo, where you at, boy? I'm like, who this? I'm like, don't worry about who this. You ready to die? I'm like, who the fuck is this? They're like, don't worry about that, ah, uh, ah. Uh. They're like, yo, you know my brother almost died, ah, uh, ah, uh, yo. Just turn yourself in, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is this? Yo, suck my dick, and I hang up. And as time went on, apparently 6ix9ine actually had some trouble even finding out what the charges against him were. I go to the precinct, the first precinct, that I, the 83rd, where I live at, I go to the precinct, and I'm like, yo, my name is Daniel Hernandez, y'all looking for me? I'm, they're like, nah, like, nobody looking for you. My mom called me, she's like, yo, like, some some detectives is knocking on the door, they looking for you. Like, what's going on? She's like, I don't know, come home. So I run to my house, by the time I run to my house, they, they left. So I go to the precinct again. I'm like, yo, y'all sure y'all not looking for me? I know. And he was eventually pulled into the interview room by NYPD detective Maureen Sheehan of the Special Victims Unit. Now I need that episode of Law and Order. But whilst under interrogation, it felt like the pressure begun to get to 6 ix 9 I'm like, what's, what's going on? They're like, yo, you know the girl was 13, right? I'm like, nah. I'm just like, yo, what's going on? Yo, bro, my, my, my heart just started racing, you heard? I'm just pumped, I'm like, and whilst he was there, he gave a comprehensive statement where he spilled the beans on himself and Tay Millie pretty hard. He said he was trying to go viral by creating lewd material with females in his videos, but that he never touches these girls and that his girlfriend is usually there when he films these things. He told the cops that Tay Millie invited over the girl, identifying him as Taquan Anderson, the man in the video. He told the cops that he thought the girl was hiding upstate and that they needed to find her because she would tell the cops that 6 9 never had sexual intercourse with her. So after getting picked up on these charges, he actually ended up spending two months on Rikers Island, locked in jail because apparently at the time he already had priors for getting caught selling heroin and assault. I got caught for selling drugs, I got caught for assault. They ran all them shits concurrent. They like, yo, this kid, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. They not trying to give me a slap on the hand, I ROR, go home, you know what I'm saying? And during this time, he supposedly shaved off all of his hair in order to avoid attracting attention in jail and taking down all of his videos from YouTube so that the grand jury couldn't see what a nutter he was. You know what I mean? I had to cut all my hair off. I had a baldy or the hair left. That's I, fucking brutal. Word. Um, it's just I had to look presentable in front of the judge. Oh, that too, yeah. Right and you took most too. of your videos offline from that era back in the day, right? Or I a, a couple to, here and there? Yo, bro, when they brought that shit to grand jury, I looked so stupid there, like, in a big-ass 60-inch screen, like, niggas showing heroin in, like... Yeah. Look dumb. And interestingly, you can actually plot when in his career he ended up going to jail on these charges just by looking at the length of his hair. You can see that he's still got long hair in the Shinigami video that dropped just a few nights before this incident went down. But then in his next relief scum life in July, we can see him with significantly shorter and undyed hair. So between his arrest on March the 5th, 2015, and his release a few months later, 6 9 sat in Rikers Island waiting for this case to be resolved, with his bail set at $100,000 before eventually being reduced down to $75,000. And eventually, he was able to scrape together the funds to get bail with the help of contributions from his friends Righteous P and Zilla Kami. Aww, friends.
Now apparently, the prosecution were originally gunning for a big, hefty sentence of 15 years plus. But 6 9 had a legal aid lawyer that apparently helped him negotiate a pretty tidy deal. After going to grand jury, it seemed clear that there was no actual rape that had taken place. But 6 9 wasn't getting let off the hook for being in the video. They like, yo, there's no rape. Like, you know what I'm saying? No one got raped, you heard? No one, like no one. And he would plead guilty to one felony count of use of a child in a sexual performance. And despite pleading guilty on October the 20th, 2015, his sentencing was adjourned for over two years, initially being pushed back to October the 20th, 2017, before being pushed back even further to January 30th, 2018. The terms of his plea were complex and restrictive. He was forced to have one year of interim probation with strict conditions. He was ordered not to post or repost sexually explicit videos or violent images featuring women or children to his social media. Gulp, that's all of his music videos out of the question then. He'd also have a mandatory two years of mental health treatment with regular updates to the court on his progress. He had to do 300 hours of community service through the NYC Parks Department. Hey, I mean, with his hair, he could probably use that time working as a patch of flowers. He'd be ordered to obtain his GED and he was also ordered to write a letter of apology to the girl and her family, making clear why his participation and posting of those videos was harmful. But then again, no him, he probably got Zilakami to write it. And crucially, he was ordered not to commit another crime for two years. And the biggest finesse of all was that the agreement stated that if all of these conditions were met before his sentencing date, the court would not oppose a youthful offender adjudication. This would mean that even though he was 18 when this happened, 6 9 would not require to register as a sex offender and the crime would be a youth offender charge, a point that he has repeated several times in interviews defending himself. And it's likely that's the only way that he with a straight face can really try and convince people that this thing happened when he was a kid, even though we all know that he was 18 at the time. So these were the terms of his deals and it's worth remembering that for a period later on in his career, the stability of this deal was cast into doubt after he got himself into a handful of other legal problems which I'll be covering later. And in the end, the terms of this deal were changed to four years probation, still avoiding the sex offender register, and being told that he had to stay out of trouble and do 1,000 community service hours. But when it came to sentencing, Tay Millie was less lucky it seemed. He actually pled guilty to possessing a sexual performance by a child, which for the record is actually an E-class felony, a lesser charge than the use of a child in a sexual performance that 6 9 pled guilty to, being a C-class felony. He'd actually also caught a criminal possession of a controlled substance charge and wasn't even caught until the 28th of March 2017. In fact, 6 9 actually said in his original statement that Tay Millie jumped out the window when he discovered that he had a warrant and he reiterated that he'd been on the run in a later interview. So it's highly possible that he actually did the race once he knew these charges were coming. And since he had a prior gun charge and was a little bit older than 6 9 he ended up getting a minimum sentence of two years and one month. Sure, they're not take a numbers, but hey, they're good honest crimes. <laughs> Fortunately for 6 9 due to the plea deal that he'd managed to cop, details of the charge that he was taking remained private for quite some time. In fact, it was only after falling out over unreturned bail money in late 2016 and early 2017 that Zilakami actually begun exposing 6 9 for these charges on social media by posting an uncensored picture of 6 9 with the girl in her bra, ironically a crime itself, because yes, what's a better way of exposing somebody who'd posted a picture of an underage girl in her panties by posting a picture of an underage girl in her panties? Nice one, Zilakami. As well as screenshotted details of the actual charges that they'd bailed him out on. And as you may know from my earlier video about the Trippy Red 6ix9ine beef, Trippy Red, even after the success of his collaborations Uwe and Poles 1469 with 6ix9ine, immediately distanced himself from Takashi following these allegations going public. I'm sorry, brose. 1400 don't promote pedophiles. If we give niggas clout, you feel me? We give niggas clout. It was an accident. But 6 9 kept it moving and didn't let the chatter slow him down. I don't understand is if you feel so, if you feel so much of a type of way, if, if, if whatever I do gets you in your feelings, or if it, it means a lot to you, why don't you go and take time into your own hands and go report me to the police? Because right now, what's going on is you're promoting a rapist, right? And you're making a rapist a lot of money. So if you don't like what I do, just might as well go report me to the police because uh, I'm just making too much money and it's kind of boring, you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of kids you have to save, a lot of children. A lot of children you gotta save, so you might as well go report me to the police. You have pictures, so like, <laughs> duh, just go tell the police, like, yo, there's a rapist on the loose. 
might just come catch me. He took every opportunity in interviews that he could to clear his name, including going as far to offer $100,000 to anybody that can prove that he's a rapist using Google, and for some reason showing off his ID on the No Jumper Show. H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, look me up on Google, and I'll give 100,000, fuck 100,000. My man Chris got it. I'll give it to you, and Adam's here. They could hit you in the DM. Oh, oh there it is. That's I don't know if you can really. Damn, I look good as shit. <laughs> Before the hair. <laughs> okay, look, I can't prove that he's a rapist, but I'm about to prove that he's a dirty fucking liar. So I reckon I've got at least 50 racks coming to me when he's out of the pen. And once word got out about these charges, more reputable sources begun reporting on 6ix9ine's case. In fact, one of the most prominent posts about it came from Genius.com, in a profile on 6ix9ine which touched on the allegations that were swirling around at the time. However, a week later, he would check in with DJ Academics to do an extended interview specifically covering these allegations, where he gave his side of the story and also shaded Genius for putting his business out there like that. I'm here to look you in your eye, and I'm expecting you to tell me the truth, and you're talking to me, you're talking to millions of people right now. Bro, I'm telling I'm, I'm ready to leave it all on the table. When I saw Genius post the story, I thought they was gonna say all the details of the case, like he was just there he was throwing he was just talking into the camera he didn't touch the girl no sexual performance was with the girl i didn't rape nobody bro the girl wasn't even raped homie so no one had sex with the girl no one had sex knowledge. with the girl word you didn't have any type of sexual contact i didn't have no her. sexual with the contact but, but, contact but, but, with the girl but no no but you were in the video i was in the video there's you a video and while he gave his side of the story much of which you already know at this point the most striking thing about this interview and many that came after it was just how skillful 6 9 was when it came to using language to manipulate the viewer into thinking that the situation wasn't as bad as it really was and personally having watched a lot of content around this situation i feel i really begun to understand the manipulation manipulative character of 6 ix personality. Because there are several things that we absolutely know to be true as a fact. Firstly, we know 6 9 was 18 years and 8 months old when this happened. However, he has made numerous attempts to try and convince the public that he was 17 at the time of the incident. He was not. You already saw the intro slate from the music video Inferno, which says that he'd gone missing and was age 17. <laughs> Bullshit! And he did the same thing in the DJ Academics interview. When I got caught? When you got caught, you were 18, but I when was it happened, 18, you were it was 17. 17. And the reason he probably thinks that he can get away with this is because of the terms of his plea deal that if he met meant that he could slide as a youth offender. But that doesn't mean that you weren't 18 when this happened. And this was a point that he reiterated when he ended up on The Breakfast Club for the first time. It so was... does that make you a registered sex offender now because you did plead guilty? Nah, I'm, I'm, I was a youth, I got a youth a offender. Okay. Yeah. A juvenile, right? And the Breakfast Club interview was interesting because it once again saw him doing some Olympic level mental gymnastics. Firstly, he tried to deflect the seriousness of the crimes onto Charlemagne, inexplicably trying to explain that having a naked underage girl on your lap at 18 is somehow okay, but not okay if you're 40. He comes out, right, with the same charge, right, at the age of him. Into the mic. Right, at, mm -hmm. the, at, at the age he's at right now. Say if, if I won't understand if I was his age, you know what I'm saying, and I, I caught that charge and it would look it would look disturbing like you know what i'm saying I'd be like what the fuck but i think the media don't see it like yo this kid is it got caught up in some shit i swear all that rainbow hair dye is poisoning your brain kid because he then took the mental gymnastics to state circus level bringing it right up charlemagne street saying that he only pled guilty because that's right he was poor. And bear in mind, this isn't, I come from a poor background so I had to sell drugs or rob to feed my family and survive. He's trying to say that the reason that he pled guilty to a child sex crime is because he was poor and disenfranchised. Then when I didn't have money for an attorney, they said this kid is a minority. He has nothing going for himself. He still lives with his mom. The system just fucked up, you know what I'm saying? And what happened was that I got caught in the system and I'm a product of, of my society. Even later, when he had his emotional interview with Angie Martinez, he pulled all the same dumb moves. How like, old were you and how old was she? She was 13. No, she was 13. Yeah, I think she was 13. And you were? I was 17. I'm not old. Like, I'm not no 41 year old. No, I'm I not this really old dude, like, no subway. Yeah, no, I get Spokesman. it, baby. I get like, it. I'm not. A, I'm a young ass kid. Like I'm young. I understand, dude. And it's not like this didn't just happen now. This happened when I was like literally before 20, before 19. You know what I'm saying? Even dissing the Breakfast Club for asking too many questions and comparing himself to Meek Mill. We have three grown adults mm -hmm. that's supposed to be leaders of our community, right? But being three adults bashing a kid, right? I remember. I think I don't know if it was before. Or after, no, it was after the Meek Mill situation, right? I was following that situation because I know what it is to, to be under the system and not the system will take over you the mm -hmm. system is made for you to fuck up and Meek Mill is a 30 year old dude that caught a charge when he was 19 he was older than me when he caught his Willie charge 18 I think 
It was, was older it, than yeah, yeah, yeah. And my god, the rainbow-headed buffoonery didn't stop there, people. Because yet another sideways finesse that he continuously tried to pull was trying to trick people into thinking that the reason he was on Rikers Island for a couple of months were for his drug charges rather than the child sex stuff. And he did this with some very clever and manipulative language, saying that he went to jail because of the priors that he had to do with his drug dealing, cleverly sidestepping the fact that it was this child sex charge that caused him to be pulled in and kept in jail because of the priors that he'd had before he committed the child sex crime. I had a couple priors. I got caught selling heroin at a store, and then I beat up the owner of the store. So they hit me with a t um, sale of illegal substance, and then I had an assault, like second degree assault. I was out for a couple months. Okay. I just stopped rapping. You know Rikers saying? Island as bad as they say it is? Man, you know what I mean? You gotta survive, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's the jungle. Though he did eventually admit on the Angie Martinez interview that it was his brother that took the drug charge without even mentioning the supposed assault. We got raided, like our house got raided. Yeah. I forgot how old I was. I was 16. Teenager. Yeah. You got arrested. Yeah. Rikers Island. Yeah, but my brother took the charges so they let us go. But you were in Rikers, no? Yeah, I was. For how long? For that, uh -huh. I, I, I didn't go. Oh. Then for the, the allegation when I was- With the like, girl, yeah. I was in there for like two, three months. So who knows, the whole thing could be cap. And it is right here that in my opinion, Six Nine begins to look incredibly Trumpian. And no, not just because he has an absurd hairdo, continuously starts wars or grabs pussies without consent. I mean because Six Nine is a master of speaking like a crooked politician. When you bring up something he doesn't want to address, he is the king of sidestepping the real issues and bringing things round to his preferred talking point. I mean, this guy has always got a way of flipping things round back onto you, making you talk about what he wants to talk about or walking back some of the terrible things that he's done and somehow, turning it into something that's permissible. I honestly would not be surprised if 6 9 gets out of jail and made a goddamn presidential bid. So like the Teflon Don Donald Trump himself, nothing seems to stick to 6 9 The fact that he still managed to blow up in spite of the fact that he had a child sex scandal in which he pled guilty is insane. Yet even in the midst of his No Jumper interview where he addressed some of these problems, he still had yet to drop his hit song Gummo. And at the end of the day, all of his manipulative language and clever sidestepping of the issues aside, it was truly the song Gummo and how big that song became that completely overshadowed all of the controversies in 6 ix career, giving him a fresh start and a platform to move forward. And that song Gummo would blow up so big and so fast but before you know it, he will be landing on the Billboard chart time and time again. So join me on the next episode of The Clout Chronicles, because after the drama, after the evolution, and after the allegations, we'll finally be taking a look at 6 ix meteoric rise to the top of the rap game and setting the stage for one of the most spectacular falls in grace the rap game had ever seen, baby. Tune in, it's gonna be fire. Yo, it's your boy Trap Lord Ross, and at this time, I wanna give a huge shout out to the patron gang, gang, gang. I appreciate every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting me, showing love, because I love to show love back. That's a whole lot of love. So shout out Javier Gonzalez, Monique Vivret McKay, Henrik, Henry Bryant, Josh Knappin, and Naraj Shukla. If you're interested in becoming a patron, sign up on www.patreon slash traplawross. It means a hell of a lot to me to have your support. It also helps me with the fact that I get a pretty crippling anxiety over the fact that YouTube can just demonetize your videos and basically destroy your career at will if they don't like something you said. That's a bit of a shitter. So it's nice to know that y'all are riding for me. And once I get to the point where I'm at 1500 a month on Patreon, and I know that patrons will be able to sustain me if something happened to my channel. I'm gonna celebrate that big win, that big W. Oh man, crippling arthritis. I'm gonna celebrate that big W once we get to 1500 a month on Patreon, gang. I'm gonna let you guys choose a video for me. I'm literally gonna put up a post on Patreon. I'm gonna let you guys choose a topic. I'm not gonna put forward ideas, just whichever one you guys choose and gets the most votes is gonna be the one that I'm gonna do once all the 6 9 stuff is all wrapped up. So, if you wanna rep the gang, head on over to patreon.com slash traplawross, become a patron, and if you want the opportunity to pick a story for me and have me do one of your ideas, not something that I was planning on doing, something totally original, and have your say and leave your crusty mark on my channel, go and do that and rep it for the gang. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again to all the patrons. It's your boy Trap Lord Ross. Peace up. A-Town. Down? Yeah, safe.